Hello from Aries. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how conveniently Aries can work with Google Classroom. I'll bring open the browser now. I'm already logged in as a teacher on a demo high school. And on the home screen, we have a class summary widget where I see all of the many sections I have across all my periods and all the students that are within them and potentially linked gradebooks to those periods. One extra detail that's the beginnings of how we provide convenience to link to Google Classroom is the Add Website button right here on this widget. If I were to click that, I could link or create one. I'll do that in just a moment, but first I'll give you a glimpse of Google Classroom as a teacher. I happen to have a pre-existing second period Google Classroom. It doesn't have students, but we'll pretend it's more exciting than that. I've got data in there that I want to link to. So we'll come over to here and I'll press add website on that second period. We have two buttons that appear because the Google integration is configured as I'm demonstrating this. If they don't appear for your circumstance, your district may not have yet opted to use what Google has to offer. And even if they did do that, there's a little bit of technical setup by your Aries administrator to have it talk to Google Classroom and provide these links to actually work. Otherwise, they just won't show up. All right, so we wanted to link that second period to a pre-existing Google Classroom. So I simply hit link, and if I were to click that, it would process for a moment and add all the kids that were missing from it. And I'd have the new students added, and we'd be good to go. That would take a moment. I won't click. We'll pretend I did click and link that. Instead, we'll cancel backwards and we'll go over to that first period that doesn't exist in Google Classroom yet. I'll hit Add Website and hit Create. Takes about a minute or two, but worth the wait. Saves you some trouble. All right, 19 students added. We'll hit OK there. Now I'll click over to the Google Classroom tab, and here it shows. You're invited to teach this class created by your administrator. Well, not personally created, but created by the automation. So the teacher can merely accept that with all the 19 students already invited conveniently. So we hit accept. Here that is. Cool. Now there's much you can do in here, but we're mostly just sticking to what Aries will benefit from, which is you add and create assignments. So I hit the plus. I hit create assignment. We'll create a nice little assignment here called Meaning of Life, an essay assignment, if you will, and we'll make that due tomorrow, and I'll assign it. Okay, so the kids now have homework to do. Let's go look at the student reality. So I'm logged in as the student, but I haven't refreshed in a while, and I'm like, hey, I got no homework. Hooray, I hit refresh. Oh, no, I've got a class now, and I've got homework. Oh, Meaning of Life. Oh, maybe I should do that. It's due tomorrow. Okay, so now the student can mark it as done, but they should probably submit something if they want a good grade. They can add and link to uh, a document they already have prepared for it on the Google Drive, link to somewhere on the web, or upload a file. Or the create thing here, they can go ahead and uh, use the productivity suite of Google, such as Google Docs, in which case we'll choose that for ourselves here and it'll create a document for me and then I'll just click into that as a student then I'll paste something that's already pre-written okay looks good enough all right so I can click turn in uh, I don't see a save button what would happen if I just close the tab oh well that's why it's good to use cloud-based productivity suites you don't ever have to worry about losing your efforts power failures or not there's no need for a save button. It saves as you go. Kind of cool. We'll just click Turn In. All right. Yes, we want to turn that in. OK. A student can't make changes to it while it's turned in. They can unsubmit it, which is to take it back, and then resubmit it. And, and uh, there you go. Next, we'll hop back over to the teacher reality. And we can see that one is done now. And we could go into Google Docs and correct it, annotate it. Or we could just uh, leave that for you to discover. 
It's worth 100 points by default. You're welcome to change what the max points is on an assignment. However, if you give them 90 out of 100, that's pretty understandable to be like a percentile if you wanted. You do have to grade in whole numbers in Google Classroom at this time. Decimals and percentages, not a viable input. So we'll give a 90 out of 100 here. Cool. All right, that's graded. Now we'll assume these other students turn something in and we'll just go ahead and give them scores as well. Maybe they submitted it on paper or something cool. All right. So as you could see, as I was marking grades on those, even though they hadn't done them yet, they were marked as non, not done and this check mark showed up. I'll hit return and we're returning those assignments to them, even though they didn't really submit a physical assignment. Well, an electronic one, just a physical grade, or I just gave them a grade because. And we're good now. Everybody's all in and returned. There are some that never bothered to turn it in. You have to return an assignment, otherwise the score will not import. Okay, so since that's done, back over to Aries. So let's go into the gradebook for that first period. And we'll just rapidly create an assignment. I'll click assignments and then add assignments. Due on Friday it was. Okay, cool. And uh, that was meaning of life. And it was worth 100 points with 100 correct possible. Okay, so save and close. And that'll show up on the scores by class here. We'll click that, go into Edit, Enter Scores. And then we'll click the little down arrow, Chevron, and we'll get more buttons and stuff, including Import from Google. We'll click that, and then we'll pick this Google Classroom here. And it shows us all the assignments. There's only one so far, and we can click that. It says, you are about to import scores into this assignment. Click Confirm to continue. Why? Because any score it is bringing in will overwrite what is already there. So that'll process for just a little bit here. And then it tells us that seven scores made it in and a bunch of them didn't because there were, was no score to import. So that's what all that messaging is about. And we know that a lot of the class didn't turn it in in this example. And there's all those scores. So that's how easy it is to bring scores back. Thank you for watching.